Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 14, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. And that is no understatement. This week is massive. Now, I know I've been telling you that May is perhaps this crescendo moment of the year, if you will. It represents the most important month. If I had to narrow it down even more, I would say that this week is the peak of the peak, if you will. This is where energies are especially concentrated and heightened as well. And what that means is something's got to change. Something's got to give. That is the overall theme, whether it is through our own frustration, whether it is through a sense of impulsivity or urgency, more of us are feeling as if the way that things have been in a real material sense, well, that just isn't working for us anymore. We're willing to do what we need to improve our circumstances, to change them from the inside out. Now, as part of this awareness, chances are there's going to be very strong emotion. I would say, especially the further we navigate into this week, well, energies, frustrations will be that much more heightened, especially in our connections to other people. Those one-on-one -on -one exchanges that we might have have a strong karmic tinge to them, but they also hold something honest. That honesty is ultimately helping us to evaluate our lives, to change what we've manifested, and to stay the course to manifest better. Whatever might happen with other people in our lives now, it is all part of ultimately leading us to better. And that's going to be something to remember because, yeah, this week has a lot of really tense energy, but that is part of the empowerment. And so the big party this week is happening in the sign of Taurus. That's where some of the biggest, most important energies are transpiring now. But of course, it isn't just isolated to the sign, but how it is we have what's taking place in the sign of Taurus reaching out to other power players. In particular, this week sets up what is called the Grand Fixed Cross. This is a very important moment that is going to define 2023 for a lot of us out there. Some of us are going to feel this energy right away. Others are going to need other impetuses to come along, to follow along, but we will get there. And regardless, the energy now does suggest that there's such a sense of intensity in the air and it is really about evaluating what is, where it is that works and doesn't. So let's start with Taurus. So much taking place there, this larger, stubborn, determined energy that is activated now really is thanks to what's happening in the sign of the earth itself and enjoying the earthly incarnation. It has to do with being fully present for your life, being fully present in your five senses, experiencing your life as it is while simultaneously staying strong as you move towards more, however it is that you define that. The sensory experience will be very heightened, yes, but so will our sense of goals, our sense of even ambition, I would say. It's not the ambition of Capricorn, but rather this is the ambition of wanting our lives in a real way to feel easier, to feel better. The energy is not easy now, but it's powerful. That's part of the gift. So the sign of Taurus right out of the gate at the beginning of the week, Mercury officially goes direct. This is a big wake up call moment for a lot of us out there. What we've manifested, where it's working for us, where it isn't, but also remember the energy of Taurus also connects us to self-value, self-love, self-esteem. It connects us to the possessions that we have, but also putting them in their right place so that possessions and money and earning money doesn't control us, but rather these things become an expression of something that feels like we can be proud of what it is 
that we've brought forward through us, through our own effort. It's the confidence of knowing that we can provide for ourselves and to those to whom we are responsible and to reap the fruit of our own effort. And so, yes, this is a very important moment. Where is it that in at least one area of life could we love ourselves more? Could we empower ourselves more to be more fully ourselves? How would our actions and thought patterns have been different, especially over the course of the last few weeks, if we were operating with self-love and self-value at the forefront? That is going to be a big question for all of us out there. And that Mercury Direct is going to help us to find the answer. Now, if you think back to last week, in the sign of Taurus, we had the most surprising day of the year that I spoke of. We also had Mercury slowing down to a standstill while hanging tight a conversation with Saturn. That energy remains constant this week as well. In fact, it is going to be Friday that Mercury and Saturn will align in harmony with precision. But again, this is sort of a free-floating energy. It's been there last week, this week, and we'll feel it in the next week as well. That allows us to take whatever insights, whatever truth, whatever clarity, whatever light bulb moments come about and translate that into practical action that leads to tangible gains. And whatever may be happening now, I want you to think back about a week into April. That was the last time as Mercury stepped into shadow. That was when we first had Mercury aligning with Saturn. Now Mercury has returned to where it was way back then, a week into April, and we may see what was taking place back then differently in some way. But again, this is a time of moving forward with stability and an eye towards how we uniquely define success and a commitment to live it. Now, collectively, I will say it is Saturn moving through the sign of Pisces that is inviting us to get really honest about spiritual belief, spiritual traditions, um, and to look at it from a lens that is not necessarily about what we wish, what we hope, and what we believe in a more meta sense, but rather what is the evidence actually showing us. To consider the imperfections, but also how we can work to make things better. A moment like this adds that much more practicality, but also really useful ideas into the mix as to how we can ground our own spirituality so that it fuels a sense of healthy self-respect. Always a question where it comes to Saturn and always a part of the gifts that Saturn can bestow as well as part of us honoring that energy within ourselves. And so that energy is operating and then we move forward, we get to Tuesday and it's the main event, right? It's the star of the show. It's what a lot of people are really looking forward to. And that is Jupiter entering the sign of Taurus. Now, there is going to be a Jupiter special horoscope, of course. So be on the lookout for that later on this week. Um, and I'll try to get a short up even sooner than then. But I will say, and I want to mention a few things now, Jupiter is an energy that on the one hand magnifies, it expands, it brings more. But it's also an energy of faith. It's an energy of transition. And it is this time that we are exercising enough faith in ourselves, in our own efforts, to actually make changes that are needed so that we can position ourselves to welcome in more, bigger and better. As far as aligning with those opportunities we really want, especially financial opportunities, especially where it comes to opportunities to love ourselves and root ourselves in greater self-love that much more as well. Now, this prospect, though, I will say, at first is going to feel rather intense. It's almost like the universe needs you to understand where it is that perhaps you're on a path that ain't it or where you're on a path that is it and you are going to pour yourself that much more into it. And so, yeah, for all of us, I think there's going to be this sense that we want better and there's this intensity, but also there may be feelings of unfairness. That's one way this energy might manifest for some of us out there. The unfairness of things not being better 
even though we've wanted it, perhaps we've already worked towards it. We desire to transform our circumstances. Maybe we've done all it is that we could do. And now we're at this moment where we realize that we are in some ways powerless over certain outcomes. And part of the gift of appreciating that is that sometimes there is a higher, more loving vision for our life that we can't even conceptualize or comprehend because we're so focused on what it is we want to manifest. We're telling the universe, we're giving the universe some wish that we have. We're saying, oh my God, I know this ask is really big, but I really, really want this. I'm going to give all of myself to have this for some place, thing, or situation. But from the perspective of the universe, that's actually a really small vision of ourselves and who we can be. There are times that say, harness your power, focus, and you're able to manifest exactly what you want. This time is more about humbling us to open us to the flow of life, even when it's hard. To open us to an understanding that there is a higher, more loving vision, and we may not even know what it is just yet. Or maybe we do need to accept that perhaps the path we're on ain't it in order to really be open to other possibilities. The evidence is there. And so, yes, in at least one way, many of us are grappling with this sense of wanting things to be better, but also feeling tired of trying to make things better that much more. However, as we navigate forward, it is on Friday that Mars will change signs moving into the sign of Leo, Pluto right now in the sign of Aquarius, of course. And as Mars steps into the sign of Leo, very quickly at the very end of the week, we'll stand across the sky with precision with Pluto. This is huge. This is that energy of tension that I mentioned earlier of feeling as if you and another person are sort of on opposite sides. The energy between Mars and Jupiter, the square, will perfect next week. However, it's really this week that we have that building towards intensity, that turning point moment at the end of the week. And we're still holding that heightened energy as we navigate into next week. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But know that this week is when the grand fixed cross begins. The intensity, the crescendo of the year really starts to take place and we feel it magnifying more and more as we navigate later and later into the week. So Mars opposite Pluto, this happens once every two years or so. And when it takes place, it is always a turning point moment. Again, going back to this idea of power and powerlessness of dynamics playing out within our one-on-one -on -one alliances in particular, because that's how oppositions like to work. But this can also be power struggles. It can be feelings of unfairness. Now, sometimes it is rooted in what the evidence is showing us. Sometimes, maybe not so much, it's rooted in what we bring to a particular moment. We've done our best to stay true to the purity of our own intentions. Well, you know what? As part of moving through life with the best of intentions, with absolute love in our heart, we may end up making choices that another person interprets as creating pain for them. And then there are times when it may be that perhaps some part of us, whether we weren't necessarily conscious of it fully, but yeah, maybe we did want to create some discontent. That's a part of learning about the human experience, a part of learning about our power as we move through life. It's a part of learning about the love that we embody. We are in our purity, in our experiences as we move through life. It is part of the world that we've created together. That sometimes our feelings might get hurt, but the gift is we get to interpret it, be better for it, and cultivate wisdom through it as well. And so as I look at this opposition in particular, you know, I'm reminded of way back in the day. Now we're going back quite a while here. 
uh, immediately after I left Walmart. So I was working for Walmart until uh, I started university. And then right around the time, just before I started university, I got another job. I was there for a little over a year. And in that environment, I had a boss. Um, I can have a lot of compassion for this person now, let me say. Uh, this person was going through a really intense Pluto transit, Pluto opposition to their son. They um, had lost their father and hadn't really dealt with the intensity, the sadness, the pain of those feelings. And instead of figuring out how to work through them, uh, this person created a lot of pain for other people, spoke in a way that was abusive to the people around them. And that experience was really intense for me. I was really glad when my contract was over. I didn't want to pursue anything or try anything more. I was, I was okay with going a different way. The thing is, though, I remember how many times when, because, you know, if you've heard my story, if you've watched me for a while, I've been a full-time astrologer now for almost 17 years. And the first seven years uh, of my business, of my website, NadiaShaw.com, I lived below the poverty line in Canada. And I remember at that time, there were moments that were really hard, that were really tough. I mean, I cannot thank enough that I had so much love and support, particularly from my parents, to navigate some of those really difficult moments. But I remember how many times, you know, I would feel like I was fighting. I was trying to make something happen. I was getting up, going to the computer, giving my all to my work and falling asleep at my computer as well at the end of the night. And I remember how many times in those moments of uncertainty, of sacrifice, I would remember my experience with this person. And I said to myself, I will never put myself in a position again where that kind of situation can occur ever again. Now, I want to also acknowledge, like I said, I had help. I had the luxury to be able to say this. I know that not everybody necessarily feels that they have a choice in the matter. But I did. And my choice in that moment was I remembered and I pushed through. That was exactly the motivation I needed to say to myself, no, I'm giving this moment my all because I never want to be in that moment again. I never want to be in that type of dynamic with another person ever again. And so in that way, as much as there were hurt feelings, in a way, you know, I can't deny that the experiences were a gift because they were what I needed in those times that could feel really challenging, that could feel really hard. Times when I needed to, you know, talk to family members, to my aunt Shireen that you've seen on my channel, to my parents, to just feel some sense of connection to purpose, some awareness of faith. And now to be on the other side, to feel like it was worth it, you know, it's such a blessing. And I can't help but think every little piece of that journey was part of the perfection. So I share this because, yeah, Mars opposite Pluto, we may find ourselves in moments like this, moments of awareness of where we are finding ourselves in a messy dynamic, where we feel it isn't fair and maybe even it feels um, as if the power struggle and the power another person has over us um, is painful to us in some way. But this is also a turning point moment as well. Sometimes that turning point is awareness. That can be the gift. The turning point can be an awareness of our own power or an awareness of karmic patterns playing out here or an awareness of what karmic learning is taking place how the experiences we're garnering here might be a part of some higher, more loving vision for our life. If we are intent on looking at it for the wisdom, for the love, what might we gain in this moment, in this interaction with another person? 
I think that may be a big gift of this time because ultimately, remember, the party is happening in the sign of Taurus. That's all about what you are manifesting. And in many ways, everything else is supporting that sense of wanting to change our lived experience for the better. Pluto in the sign of the collective, of friendship, Mars in the sign of the self, the individual, the celebrity, and your own heart's desires. These being conflicted is a powerful moment as well within us. What do we owe each other? What do we not? We may owe other people something. We may feel like we want to contribute to the collective. Can we do that in a way that still honors ourselves, recognizes and feels grateful for the moment that we are in while identifying where things could be better for the collective? What are we willing to do as part of that? That may be part of the consideration here also. But here's something else to consider. Mars is the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio. Pluto is the modern ruling planet of Scorpio. This type of opposition ultimately is an invitation to move beyond old definitions and old ways of engaging Scorpion energy and elevating instead. Elevating ourselves, elevating our circumstances. But think about what Scorpion energy is. You know, it's so interesting because Scorpio is the opposite sign of Taurus. And Taurus is very much about the earth and what is physical, what is sensory. But Scorpio is about what is substantial. It's about saying and identifying what is superficial and what is essential, what is true, what really matters, what is authentic. What does it mean to be authentically ourselves, especially in the context of who we are today? Because who we are now is not whom it is that we were. Whom it is that we were, well, ultimately, That may stir at a time like this, but we also have these breakthroughs and understandings that we have transformed, that we are in some way different now, and we no longer need to identify with a version of ourselves rooted in the past when that person is no longer here. You have evolved, you've grown, you've done the work. This is about acknowledging that, seeing your past self and the self that you are becoming and appreciating the contrast and choosing to continue to elevate. Now, all of this is happening with the backdrop of a new moon in Taurus on Friday. I told you Taurus is where the party is. That is certain. Now, this new moon is speaking in harmony with Mars and Neptune, setting up what astrologers like to call a triangle of potential. It's not quite a a major configuration, like the grand fixed cross. That's going to be the dominant energy this week and next week as well. But still, it suggests opportunity and insight and the cultivation of talent. We also have somewhat of a conjunction with Uranus. Uranus is about nine degrees away from this new moon. So it's a wide conjunction. And yet these energies are close enough in the sky where there's enough of a surprise, if not breakthrough quality, to what is playing out now. Consider this also. It is on Monday that Mars will speak in supreme harmony with Neptune. So these planets are already connecting both in water signs, and then both on either side connecting with that new moon. It's like that harmonious energy of Mars and Neptune continues throughout the week as well. And that is being awakened with faith and inspiration and creative energy. It's knowing that you can trust that there's something working on your behalf. It's being willing to have faith and get excited about the prospects as you work towards manifesting something better. The fact that on Wednesday, the sun is speaking in harmony with Neptune with precision, well, that further encourages this inspirational energy to dominate. And that is going to be part of the new beginnings that any new moon does bring and does suggest. 
A new moon in Taurus is about looking at all of these things having to do with manifestation, the five senses, your experience of life, your possessions, your self-love, your self-esteem, your self-worth, and seeing it differently, seeing the potential in new ways, but also welcoming in new experiences to cultivate a meaningful sense of self-value and have the universe respond in kind, well, that is where big growth and possibility lie now. Truly, inspirational events can happen here, and they can happen very quickly, propelling us into a future that feels a lot more abundant. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It's a powerful and meaningful astrological moment, and all I can say is, wow, (laughs) wow, it is a big astrological time. Like I said, this is the crescendo of the crescendo, the peak of the peak. Strong energies playing out and a determination for things to be different. We're very aware of how things have been, but we also know and have a sense of where we are now, but also whom it is that we're becoming something even more than we knew before. There is this energy of transformation and intensity that permeates through the week and yet at the same time we're being invited to find truth and clarity and grace in the five senses stay present for your life i cannot stress this enough there is no moment in your life that will ever be this exact moment and the only way you will know it exists is if you are aware that it exists and the only way to do that is through the sensory experience Breathe when you need. Be in spaces where you are breathing deep, smelling deeply, seeing things that feel right to you in your soul, hearing sounds that please you, eat things that feel especially pleasing to you as well. Touch those things that are meaningful to you, including the people that you love in your life. All of these are strategies to stay present because this is a time of accelerated growth, accelerated change, of leaping into a future that feels a lot more hopeful and a lot more inspired. But that hope is going to be found in this moment and nowhere else. It is the present and the present is where the power is. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys and to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm so grateful for you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff speaks to you and your sign, log on now to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded, exclusive video scopes for each and every sign each and every week for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Now, higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University has some incredible programs that are underway right now. They're taking place right now. This is so exciting. We've got an amazing speaker series. We've got classes with me as well. And of course, my dear friend, Jungian analyst, astrologer, tarot expert, Ursula Stockter is back at Synchronicity University. So she's currently teaching a very special program looking at Jung and astrology. And you can now sign up for those as individual classes. She previously did a course at Synchronicity University called Jung and Tarot. And you can download that right now at Synchronicity university.com get that as an instant download now the other very special thing about what ursula is doing this is the first course jung and astrology which is being offered in english and in spanish so the very first spanish language course is underway right now thanks to ursula stockter at synchronicityuniversity.com again you can sign up for single classes now links are in the description below Synchronicity University presents classes with me. Yes, I'm back after a year away at my own school at Synchronicity University. And this is called Back to Our Roots. It is a look at a step-by-step approach 
to natal chart reading. And so this is where I teach you the basics that I outline in my first book, Astrology Realized. Now, whether or not you have the book, you'll be able to keep up with this class. Whether you're a seasoned pro, whether you're really starting at the very, very beginning, you're an absolute newbie, everyone is welcome. And so our next class is going to be um, on signs. So our first class was on planets. Next week, or this coming week rather, we will be looking at signs. Uh, the class from this past week had to be rescheduled actually. Thank you for your love and your patience to those students out there who are signed up. I'm really looking forward to connecting with you this coming week. And yes, these classes are now available as singles. Um, we are this week, as I said, looking at signs. The following week, it'll be houses. Then we'll look at aspects and then we're putting it all together. So this is very exciting and it really allows you to look at the foundations of your practice differently in some way. I hope you're absolutely loving it if you're there or that you'll sign up. Consider an individual class as well at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents our May 2022 speaker series, which is underway right now. Single classes are available. Well, let me introduce you to some of these incredible speakers. Melissa Sanova, she is our big dog for this session. And she is the best-selling author of Kitchen Table Tarot and Kitchen Table Magic. In fact, she previously taught courses on these two different books, five-part courses each. And you can download those right now for a very limited time at synchronicityuniversity.com as well. But yes, her individual class is coming up. She will be part of helping you to understand the setup, everything you need to put into place on the lead up to the moment of a reading. So it'll be a very intriguing class. My friend, Franco Soulbody, he's coming up this week and he is gonna help us to understand the different ways in which people choose to manifest their charts. And he's gonna be using the chart of a pretty intense cultural figure, Charles Manson, as part of helping us to learn these lessons. Helene Ceriso, I love this woman. She embodies a loving approach to astrology with her heart house astrology. Well, she'll be giving us a look ahead at the upcoming Venus retrograde season. Now, Venus is going to go into shadow on the 20th of June. Can you believe it? We're right around the corner. Venus is going to spend an unusually long time in the sign of Leo, and this is going to be a doozy of a transit, let me tell you. She's got some positive takes on it as well. And I think that you'll really enjoy this. She's going to help you to understand this energy. It's a core energy, but also how it speaks to you in your chart as well. We have Natalie Levin. She's going to be talking about approaching a moment of a reading with a client with kindness. And that includes reading your own chart as well and how valuable and important that is, the ethics you bring to the moment of a reading. And Dustin Cormier, my fellow Canadian, well, he is going to be teaching on what's called the friend enemy technique in Vedic astrology. So that's a practical thing you can learn right away and apply it for your greater astrological success. You can sign up for single classes right now for any of these speakers at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust. It is a massively important astrological week ahead. I hope that you stay present for it. That really is key. That has been a big awareness that's come through for me lately in my own meditations and contemplations. Uh, I will be leaving Brazil. Uh, by the time this publishes or right around the time this is publishing uh, is when I will be leaving and I have loved every minute. Thank you to all the friends and fans who gave so much love while I've been here and a lot of new people that I met as well who didn't necessarily know me through my work, but I've been really surprised how many people in Brazil are fans of my work and they have brought so much love. I am forever grateful. Brazil has changed me in ways I really needed, healed me in ways that I really needed. I don't want to get too emotional here, but I'm very grateful in ways that will stay with me for a long time to come. And I really hope that the universe brings me back here sooner rather than later. More is to be revealed, of course. Thank you again for watching. So grateful for you. Enjoy this week. Enjoy this moment. It's a big one. 
It's an important one. And the more present you are for it, the more you'll make of it, the more you'll enjoy this unique time as well. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Welcome to the exciting rebirth of Superstar featuring Choose Your Membership Rate as low as just $3 a month. At Superstar, you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, class passes for Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there.